Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the JB and Millie channel, I'm JB and today we're going to be going through Velma episode 2 and finding all the easter eggs and references that you may have missed while watching it for the first time yourself. So just a little bit of a warning, this may get into a bit of spoiler territory, we're not going to go over any specific plot points or specifically what happens within the show but we are going to be showing screenshots and visual references in regards to the easter eggs that we did find. So if you want to go into episode 2 completely spoiler free then please click off this video and maybe even come back to the video after you've finished watching the episode for yourself because it could be that you catch something that I've missed. I'm not the most observant person in the world and certainly I did miss I think one in the first episode which was very nicely pointed out in the comment section so if you do want to correct me about a few things I'll be very grateful. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The only other thing I want to point out is that this series is meant for a more mature and older audience. So if you are watching this and you do think that you may be offended by anything, then viewer discretion will be advised for the show itself. So the first Easter egg is an insight into Norval's room. And on the wall, you can see that there's a photo or a portrait of Mr. Hyde, who was of course introduced in Scooby-Doo Where Are You? The episode Nowhere to Hide. Similar to this, on that very same wall we have a picture of Charlie the Funland Robot who was of course introduced in Scooby Doo Where Are You, the episode Foul Play in Funland. So you may not recognise this image from the show itself and that's because I did need to flip it slightly to make the text more clear but we see that when Velma is rooting through one of her drawers there is a cassette tape that reads Lost Groovy Hits of 1969. Now that may not seem like an obvious reference but if you know that 1969 was the original date that Scooby Doo Where Are You did air so it's a nice little reference to the original series. Now I'm really not sure if this is an easter egg or not but we see visually here that one of novels, I think they say that this is relative, does look a lot like the Shaggy that we know and love from all the other series of Scooby-Doo. So it may be a visual reference, it may not be. Let me know if you think it is in the comment section down below. But speaking about visual references, there are a few moments that happen within this episode that I do want to include in this that are Easter eggs in terms of like video clips. But if they're not included, it's simply because the video was blocked every time that I've tried to include it. I may just leave a comment down below saying what Easter eggs there are that I've missed out in this. So hopefully it works out. What are we selling? Oh, it's just the usual. Zoinks, jeepers, mystery machine, and of course, ga 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 ganja And how was my hair the color of buffalo wings? I just always figured your parents are Wilma Flintstone and Daniel Day Kim. <laughs> now the next, and I think last section, will be focused in on novel snacks. And we see the chat box to the bottom right hand side. And the first one we see is Ruby J. This is of course a reference to Joe Ruby who co-created the Scooby-Doo franchise way back in 1969. The next easter egg we see is just underneath that where we see the username Scrappy79 saying hey man, HYD, how you do? So of course the obvious reference is that that is a callback to Scrappy Do, but kind of interestingly and maybe obviously in fact that 79 also does bear some significance as that is the year that Scrappy Do's debut episode The Scarab Lives actually aired. If you want to know more about The Scarab Lives we recently dropped an interview with the writer of that episode Mark Evanier and I'll leave a link to that interview in the description down below. And the last easter egg that we have for this video is that the chat box the last user is the Hex Girls fan. That kind of goes without saying doesn't really need much more of an explanation apart from that that is an easter egg to the Hex Girls first introduced in of course Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost. So yeah, that's all we found from this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And once more, if you do have any that we missed, please feel free to comment them down below. And if you want to keep up with more content, such as weekly Scooby-Doo interviews and more coverage from this series, then please like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.